If you're here to learn about hierarchical temporal memory from the ground up, you're in the right place, because this is HTM School. Hi, I'm Matt Taylor. I am the open source community flag bearer for Numenta and the NUPIC open source project. HTM is a unique approach to artificial intelligence that starts from the neuroscience of the neocortex. We're not trying to recreate a brain, we're just trying to learn how intelligence works in the neocortex and build systems on the same principles. In this first episode of HTM School, I'm going to give you a broad overview of HTM, and then in subsequent episodes, we'll dive into some of the details. So if you wanna follow along, just subscribe so you can be notified and you won't miss any episodes. So let's start with the neocortex. The neocortex is that wrinkly blob on the top of your brain. It takes up about 75% of your brain and it has evolved in mammals over the past one to 200 million years. So reptiles, for example, do not have a neocortex. This is a mammalian development. So and it gives us a decided advantage over our reptiles and bird cousins. In humans, the neocortex is about the size of a dinner napkin. It's 2.5 millimeters thick and it's all scrunched up and shoved inside your skull so it can have more surface area. So the older parts of the brain that are below the neocortex are involved in the basic functions of life like sleeping and eating and sex and love and emotions and that sort of thing. But those aren't intelligent. Those old parts of the brain don't represent any real intelligence. What makes you, you, is all stored in your neocortex. That's where all your memories are stored. That's where all the lessons that you've ever learned reside. That's your identity. That's your intelligence. The neocortex is considered the seat of intelligence in the brain. If you were to take slices of your neocortex from a bunch of different places in your brain and look at them all under a microscope, you'd see something remarkable the cellular structure of each one of these slices and that sheet that you've cut it out of is going to be almost identical no matter where you cut it out of. So if you took it from the visual processing part of your brain or the auditory processing part or the language generation, you'll see that the structure is the same. So this tells us that the type of problems that the brain is solving as it's getting all of this sensory information from the world are very similar and it's solving them in the same way, it has the same cortical structure and the same algorithmic reasoning when it deals with information at every part of the neocortex. So your neocortex is divided up into several dozen regions, and these regions are connected together through bundles of nerve fibers that go through white matter. These regions are logically linked together in a hierarchical structure or hierarchy. And the raw sensory data, or the more lower level types of data coming from your ears and your eyes and your senses, come up at the lower levels of that hierarchy and are processed by nodes in the lower levels. The output of those nodes are then passed up to higher levels in the hierarchy, which are processed in the same fashion because of this common cortical structure throughout the cortex. And then the output of those regions are then sent upward and this continues up this hierarchy. As we climb or transcend that hierarchy, the ideas that are being understood over time become more abstract and more permanent. Let's say, for example, your brain sees a picture of an object. So the lower levels of the hierarchy might be involved with determining edges of things or borders of things, and up and higher in the hierarchy, maybe uh, shape recognition, higher up in the hierarchy could be object recognition, and as we get higher into the abstract levels of the hierarchy, we could be associating those objects with ideas, with things, with activities, and relating those with other memories and ideas that we've stored in other parts of the cortex. HTM theory focuses on the idea that there are common processes across the whole cortex, like we've already hinted at, so we're not concerned about all the different sensory inputs and how they're processed. We're not concerned about how the retina processes data or how the cochlea processes data because from the neocortex's standpoint, it, that input from every one of those senses is all essentially the same. It does the same types of functions and operations over that input no matter where it's coming from. Because each region is performing the same set of processes on the input data, 
That means that the capabilities of the entire neocortical structure must be present within each region itself. Therefore, we can focus on how one region operates and how it interacts with its neighbors. In this way, when we build out hierarchical models, we can create indefinite complexity that can work on any sensory motor problem. The human neocortex has between 20 and 30 billion neurons in it. And you could consider the state of your cortex at any point in time, the active neurons that are on in those 20 to 30 billion neurons at that point in time. So one remarkable thing about the cortex is if you do look at that, you would see that a remarkably small percentage of neurons are going to be on at any point in time, generally about 2%. You'll hear that a lot in HTM theory. That's the general sparsity that we use in our algorithms and applications. You might represent the state of a layer or region of cortex with an array of ones and zeros each bit in that array representing a neuron and whether it is active or not. So this is what we call a sparse distributed representation taken straight from the neuroscience. Every SDR represents neurons in a region of the cortex and whether they are currently on or off. Sparse distributed representations is a key element in HTM theory we don't believe you can have truly intelligent systems without using this data structure. So we're gonna talk a lot more about SDRs in the future, so stay tuned for those episodes. There are two basic inputs to the neocortex. One is a copy of the motor commands that are coming out of the old brain and going out to command your muscles. That copy gets sent back into the neocortex so it can understand how it is interacting with the world around it. The second thing is a copy of the sensory input coming from all the senses, all of your touch and your taste, your sight, your hearing. All of that data is also copied and sent to the neocortex because that gives it a representation of what is happening in the outside world. So we've got sensory input and motor commands. These two things give the neocortex a sensory motor model of the world, not just what's happening in the world, but how it is interacting with it in time. You might think about it like this. As you're looking around, your eyes are moving all the time. And every time your eyes move, your optic nerve is sending a picture to your neocortex that is entirely different from the one that it just sent. If your neocortex did not receive information about where and how your eyes moved, it would not be able to understand why this picture is changing. It would just see the world jumping from place to place with no real reason for it. And that's not the way that we perceive the world. We understand the world because we are constantly understanding not only the data we're receiving from our sensors, but the data we're receiving from our own brains on how we're interacting with that world. Now, HTM systems do need the equivalent of sensory organs. And we call these things encoders. So an encoder is something that takes a data type and converts it into a sparse distributed representation so that the HTM can then digest it. HTM's language is sparse distributed representation. So we have to figure out how to turn these different values of data into SDRs. So we have a collection of common encoders that we already use inside of NuPic and HTM Java and our own HTM implementations, but they all do essentially the same thing. They take data, which could be numbers or dates or temperatures or what have you, GPS coordinates, and it converts them into an SDR that then the HTM system can understand the changes in that data over time. So one of the most interesting things about this is that we are able to create encoders that have no biological counterpart. For example, we've created a GPS encoder, which can take latitude and longitude and understand how an object moves through time and space. It can then make predictions about where that object is going to be after it's learned some of its patterns. It can give us anomaly indications about how anomalous its behavior is at any point in time. We can even potentially classify its movement. So this gives us a hint about where intelligent machines are going in the future. At the heart of HTM theory is an algorithm called temporal memory. Now this is something that learns the patterns that are changing over time in these neurons that are on in these SDRs over time. It operates on motor commands as well as sensory input. 
And HCM postulates that every excitatory neuron in the neocortex is learning transitions of patterns. Temporal memory is probably the biggest difference between HTM and other commonly used machine learning techniques today. HTM starts with the core assumption that everything the neocortex does is based on the memory and recall of sequences of patterns. HTM systems learn continuously. So as the input data changes, the HTM model updates itself as that data changes. So there's no need for batch processing or learning on a training set. So you can train a model. You can always, that model can always change over time as the data changes. HTM builds a predictive model of the world. So every time it receives input, it's attempting to predict what is gonna happen next. So it's got this idea of what's gonna happen. And when it gets the information about what really did happen, it can keep track of how well it did. If it does well, it reinforces that learning. If not, it does not. A system like this will constantly adapt to the world as it changes. So scientists started working on artificial neural networks over 50 years ago, before we knew much about how the brain worked at all. But since then, neuroscientists have gotten a lot of insight into the neural biology, anatomy, and physiology of the neurons in the neocortex, and we've learned a lot. But the basic state of ANNs has not changed at all. Despite the name neural network, ANNs really have not much to do with real neurons at all. Now, ANNs have been evolving recently into some interesting new ideas, convolutional neural networks, recurrent neural networks, deep learning, but these are still not really biologically plausible models, and they're a far cry from what's going on right now in your neocortex. HTM is an evolving theory. We have a long way to go before we come up with a full theory of the neocortex. But the good news is we've made significant progress on nailing down some of the fundamental aspects of this theory. So we can do some interesting things just by simulating one layer of one region of cortex. What we've created in the software today represents data encoding principles so that we can get data into SDR format, the temporal memory algorithm that I talked about to get predictions and anomaly indications out of live streaming data. From what we can do just with one layer of one region of cortex, you know, about, you know, one millimeter cubed of cortical tissue is really amazing. And so it tells us that there's a bright future for HTM. And the more we can build onto this theory and build that out into software, the more capabilities we're going to get out of it. If you want to find out more about this stuff right now, you can do a couple things. First off, I highly recommend this book by our founder, Jeff Hawkins. It's called On Intelligence. This is the book that got me interested in this field of study and Numenta over 10 years ago. I highly recommend it if you like this type of thing. Uh, you don't even have to be interested in building HTM systems. It's just a great layman's introduction into cortical theory. You can also take a look at our website, numenta.com learn. There's a bunch of video presentations, white papers, example applications, a bunch of different resources that you can look at to dive in and learn more about the theory and take in any direction that you wanna go. Otherwise, stay tuned to this YouTube channel because I'm going to be continuing this HTM School series in our next episode, which will be about bit arrays, the very basic of basics when it comes to HTM. And that will lead us into discussions about sparse distributed representations. So stay tuned and I hope to see you soon. If you like this video, please click that like button and subscribe and I will keep them coming. Take care.